Hello, my name is Austin. I'm with Van Meter's automation support team, and today we're going to talk about our Proposal Works tool, how to configure some products, and uh, help you out with crosses from third party products. Our first step we're going to start with today is actually opening up our current program updater. Uh, this updater is going to update Proposal Works and all other Rockwell tools that you're going to be using. Uh, our team runs this about once a week. I definitely recommend at least once every two weeks. If you want to run it every day, that's fine. Um, you'll let it load, it'll find the update files. It's going to run through all of your uh, Rockwell um, softwares that you've downloaded, your current program updater, uh, software selection wizard, proposal works, IAB, crossworks, all of this that's been downloaded from Rockwell's website. It will check. You can see I have not updated mine for a while, so it is truly going through and checking. Once it loads up, we'll be able to download those updates and have the new availability from Rockwell. All right, now we can hit Get Selected Updates. Shouldn't take too long here. And then we'll be good to go into Proposal Works and select our products. All right, and now that the updates are finished, we can close and finish this window. And now we can open up our Proposal Works software. Now we have Proposal Works opened up. Uh, we're first going to look at uh, how to find projects or find products. Our main page shows us where we have our keyword filter, catalog number filter, and then our product selection library. Keyword filter is where we could type in um, generic product uh, options like a contactor. We can see all of our possible contactor options. Um, if you do misspell or if Rockwell does label it in a slightly different way, combination starter versus combo starter is a big one sometimes. I'm just making sure that you are spelling it in the correct way or else we can search by Rockwell catalog numbers like the 100C contactors. The first product we're going to look for is actually just a push button, illuminated push button option. So we're going to go to our push button group. We'll look at our 30 millimeter and we'll look at our metal type. We're actually going to go into our push buttons, momentary contact illuminated. We'll double click. And then from here, we can see the entire selection process here, all the variables that are going to go into this specific button. We'll say, no, we are not going to be putting this in a hazardous location. And no, we do not need uh, finger guards on our uh, contact blocks. Power module, this is going to be for our LED illumination option. How are we going to power the module? What type of head do we want on the actual push button? We'll say we'll use an LED 120 or 24 volt DC. All of this is going to be based on whatever application that you're needing and want to utilize. And once you've got it selected out, you should have a full part number up here. That full part number um, is what you can order as factory assembled. Factory assembled means it's going to come with the button, with the contacts, with the LED light, all in one assembled unit. That might have a long lead time though. A lot of times what's going to be faster is to choose the user assembled option. And once you choose user assembled and hit accept, you'll see the breakdown of that overall part number. All right. And now we see here we've got our 800T QBH2B, that's still the full part number, and then the breakdown of all the components that go into that part number. It gives us again the catalog, a little description, and then the quantity needed over here as well. The pricing over here on the right side is the list price that Rock will list these uh, components at. Um, when you get a quote from your uh, Van Meter sales rep, your price will be different depending on uh, what price modifier you have on your project. Um, 
We'll go ahead and minimize this list for now, and we'll look at our next component, our contactors. Again, we know our contactors are in the 100C series, so we can search by catalog number. Go into our contactors. And again, just a product breakdown here of the, of the uh, data that we're going to need. We'll say we're supplying this motor with 480 volts, that we're going to power the control and the coil with 120 volts AC. We'll say we're going to be using screw terminals. And then rated operational current, we'll say 12 amps. You do see here that there is an optional motor horsepower. Whenever we are sizing anything Allen Bradley, we are going to be sizing based off of current rating. So horsepower is nice, but it's not going to be needed for overall part configuration. Three poles and one auxiliary contact. We got our 100 C12 D10. We can hit accept. And again, we get a part number, description of our part, quantity needed, and list price. If we needed more detail on our 100C contactor, we could go into our Documents tab up top. From that Documents tab, we've got Product Supplements. These supplements are going to be our repair parts list, technical data view, product details, all of these super useful when trying to uh, get more detail about your products. SCCR ratings. I can double click open it up and get our SCCR depending on what unit we specifically have and what components we are going to be using it with. Similar, we could open up our repair parts list. We can see the repair parts of our 100C contactors, coils, and other repair part diodes. Um, as well as product supplements, Rockwell has done a large revamp of their product drawings library. If you go to product drawings, we can see for our contactor, we have a 3D step drawing, 3D mechanical PDF drawing, 2D AutoCAD drawing file, and a 2D PDF file. You can double click on these and download them as needed. Or if you need a specific drawing type that's not listed here, our launch online viewer to see and request additional drawings is a new tool Rockwell's implemented. This takes you to their online product catalog that has the documents list plus drawings. And then you can do an easy click here to email Rockwell for other drawing types that are not available. Just to fill out your company name. Once you've got your information filled out, you'll choose the specific drawings that you're needing. We'll say 2D NCDFX drawing, and we'll hit Done. And that'll build out this email that we'll send to Rockwell's drawings team, and they will get back with us with our drawings shortly. Our next tool we're going to talk about is our Crossworks tool. Our Crossworks tool is going to cross a non-Allen Bradley product like ABB or Siemens into an Allen Bradley equivalent. We're going to do a CA440N. See, it pops up pretty quickly there. It does recognize the ABB part number and crosses it into a 100-FA40 Rockwell Auxiliary Front Mounted Contact Block. Um, we'll see here once we accept this that this is technically a valid cross. They do the exact same thing. The only difference and the hurdle we're gonna have to overcome is that this is going to mount on a ABB contactor and our 100F also mounts on a 
Allen Bradley contactor. So while these parts function the same way and are technically crossed in crossworks, you will have to cross the contactor that they mount onto. And that's similar to any other product. Uh, you're not going to be able to only cross individual accessories or components. The whole unit will need to be crossed. Our next example will be a 02063511116 terminal block. And again, just hitting enter. It is a just terminal block cross to our 1492 EAJ35. Um, again, this one will work for us. It is just a terminal block with an end cap. So just showing that this one will also cross directly. Um, if you do type out a number that does not have a cross, let's say if we do a 020555, and this will appear when you type in an object that does not have a cross. If you know that it crosses to a Rockwell product, you could manually fill that all out, but we do not know that for a fact, so we get our example that has no cross. We'll hit accept and return. This will populate these crosses down into our BOM inside of our proposal works. And you can see it added it directly under our contactor. We've got our 100 FA40 and our 1492 EAJ35. You can see these do come with notes as well about the crosses. And then we get our blank item here, 020555. We'll just go ahead and delete that out for now, since it was not a valid cross. Now that we have our bill of materials here, we can jump to the top right hand side of our screen to our generate documents option. This will give us the option to import and export data. We've got import options. We're going to jump up to export a Word document. You can see we also have Excel and CSV files as well. We'll choose our Word document. Our next step then is what options do we want to include in this generated document. We've got ID, catalog number, description, quantity, notes, headings, and KMAT number. Once you have the ones that you want to send, we'll hit generate and generate a Word document. All right, thanks for joining me on this uh, proposal works introduction. I uh, hope you guys were able to learn a little bit and feel free to reach out to any Van Meter employee or your local sales specialist if you have any further questions. Thank you.